Hello everybody, this is Conversations, episode 3, and today we're joined with my grandfather, Grandpa Pastor Hiram Upham, and as always, Pastor Joel Toppin. And so today, the conversation is about God's faithfulness through tough times, and as we were kind of mulling the topic and, and thinking about things, we couldn't think of anybody better <clears throat> to talk about God's faithfulness than my grandpa Hiram. Yeah. Um, he had been here for decades, and he's he's been here through the tough times, he's been here through the glorious times, and we couldn't think of anyone better, anyone else that has as much wisdom and, and a wealth of knowledge like my grandpa. So, Pastor Joel... Yeah, you know, this is something that uh, was on my heart when, when we were thinking about having Pastor Hiram come in and do a conversation video. Just uh-huh. thinking about how God is faithful in every season of life. And, you know, we've seen some, we've seen some difficult times in, in our lifespan. And this year has been one of those years I think it's taken a lot of people by surprise. Mm-hmm. And I see a lot of jokes online and a lot of memes saying, you know, would not recommend 2020. It's a one-star year. <laughs> Uh, you know, it, for for some people, it just really has taken them by surprise. The 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 whole situation with with this virus going around and and things being turned up on end. Yeah. Not being able to have vacation like they used to. Can't go to a restaurant like you used to. Can't go to church like you used to. Mm-hmm. And in the middle of the, all this, a lot of people are asking, "Where is God?" And I'm just reminded about how in my lifetime we saw some hard times yeah. when we when we were kids. My dad was going to Bible school in Allendale, North Dakota, and we lived in a house that ice would form on the inside walls. I'm not exaggerating. It's just, we, we had some tough times. Yeah. But God got us through all that. Mm-hmm. And I remember you telling some of your stories at uh, camp, various camp meetings, but uh, just thought we'd uh, turn it over to you and just share some of the, the occasions when God has shown how good and how faithful he is, even when we're suffering lack or going through a really tough season. Okay, I'd just like to say uh, uh, Abraham's blessings are rested on me, on all of us. And uh, uh, going back to some of the hard times, um, uh, Yvonne and I, my wife, uh, when we married, uh, we didn't have anything. You know, we didn't even own a car. <laughs> wow. We didn't have a house. We didn't have uh, anything. Just wow. two little bags, her clothes or my clothes, and love. Mm. Full of love. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we, uh, uh, her grandfather had an old log house that he said we could stay in because they moved into a newer house. And the old log house uh, didn't have any running water, didn't have any bathroom facilities. Uh, the, our cook stove was a wood range wow. cook stove. Mm. Our heat was also a heater, a wood heater. And uh, we had to run down to the creek to get uh, our water. And uh, we had an outhouse uh, there. And my uh, son and daughter grew up, the early years, they grew up in that situation also. And, uh, <clears throat> but in all of that, uh, we were both faithful to the Lord. She, she was already saved before we got married. I was already saved before we got married. And matter of fact, I was already doing some evangelistical work uh, around the, uh, the states, Washington, Oregon, Idaho, uh, Wyoming, and uh, Canada, all these places. And when I first started out evangelizing uh, for the Lord, I didn't have a car. Wow. But I was getting from Arizona to California to <laughs> Washington to Oregon, all these places. Uh, without a car. <laughs> and back in them days when we held revivals, they were like uh, three nights, you know. We went uh, anywhere from uh, uh, two weeks to oh, yeah. uh, three weeks, uh, 21 days uh, in revival every night. Mm-hmm. And during that time, we saw a lot of um, you know, young people uh, getting saved and born again, filled with the Holy yeah. Spirit. But anyway, our life uh, in, our, in the early years was really uh, a struggle. And, uh, but in all of that, uh, we stayed faithful to the Lord. Uh, we stayed faithful to the church that we were part of. And uh, there was a couple of times that uh, 
I was practically kicked out of the church, but I'd go back in there anyway with my guitar, my <laughs> amp, <laughs> and get up on the platform and, and help with the music. And uh, but it, it it came to the time when uh, I uh, started also to minister in the church, pastor of the church. And uh, but the thing I want to just bring out really uh, uh, fast is uh, Abraham's blessings. How God began to bless us. Like I said. Yeah. We got married. She had a little bag with her clothes. I had a little bag with my clothes. We didn't have a house. We didn't have a car. And then God began to bless us because of our faithfulness in the Lord. And uh, through the years, uh, the Lord has blessed us. It's not inherited from our families, you know, like the, yeah. your family gives you the land or whatever. This was yeah. not inherited. God helped us buy 40 acres. Uh, up by the mountains yeah. so we own 40 acres up there and then uh, the Lord was able to uh, uh, help us buy a, a little lot here in Browning and we have a mobile home on there and we have that diner um, and then out where our place is now uh, our house is an acre and a half surrounded by houses that only have uh, what is that 20 by 50 yeah. Uh, uh, size yards, you know. Yeah, you got a nice lot up yeah. there. Yeah, and so we have an uh, uh, acre and a half lot that we're uh, on. And um, uh, so these are the blessings of the Lord, you know. Uh, yeah. uh, having a place like that, the Lord favored us where everybody else around us has just a little tiny place that they're staying. And God gave us a big area, you know, in our house and our daughter's house. And, and, uh, then on top of that, we have that uh, 40 acres up there where we have camp meetings. And um, uh, then we have the little diner over here. It'll probably open up later on again. And uh, the, the mobile home that uh, uh, Ben and uh, his wife lives in. But these are the blessings that the Lord has, has given us through the years. Uh, the Lord has blessed us with a, uh, a good-sized motor home that's paid for. We don't want a penny on it. A smaller little tiny motor home that's paid for. No one, no, we don't want it. We have a pickup, we have a Suburban, or we have a uh, Impala Chevy. All, yeah. we don't owe anything on them. It's great being debt free, isn't it? Yeah. It really yeah. is. It takes a lot so, of pressure off. But anyway, these came about by being faithful. And I was talking to a young man one day and I told him, I said, you know, he's really struggling right now. And he said he did give his heart to the Lord, but uh, I don't know if he's going to another church or whatever. But I told him, he said, you begin to be faithful to the Lord and you begin to follow after what the Lord wants you to do. God's going to begin to not only bless you yeah. in a spiritual sense, but he's going to bless you with Abraham's blessings. Right. You're going to get materials. You're going to get maybe a nice home, uh, whatever. The Lord will begin to bless you in these areas, you know. Mm -hmm. And I was just telling uh, uh, my wife today, I says, you know, I says, uh, I said, the Lord has given us really a generous heart. You know, we're act right now we're not working. You know, we don't have jobs. But yet the Lord is providing finances for us where we're lending and not borrowing. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're bringing young men in, in, in to our place over there for them to maybe mow our lawn or uh, do other things that we pay them, you know. Sometimes I think, where did we get this money? Yeah. You know? But uh, next thing we know, we have uh, finances to help pay uh, uh, somebody, yeah. whoever, to uh, uh, mow our lawn or cut wood or, uh, or just, just whatever, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so I just want to more or less bring that out to show you that if you begin to be faithful to the Lord and you, you continue to serve God and uh, walk to the best of the ability that God gives you in the things of the Lord, the Bible says that these blessings shall overcome you, overtake you. Yeah. you know, they'll run you down. They'll run over you. <laughs> and that's what's happened to us through the years. You know, the, the blessings of the Lord has just run over us. You know? Really? And... Uh, and then we have, you know, some times when, when things kind of go, go rough, you know, we've, we've lost a lot of loved ones, you know, my dad, my mother, I lost all my, my brothers and sisters, you know, they're all in heaven you know, because they all serve the Lord, but they're gone. Yeah. And right now I'm the only one left out of, <laughs> out of our family, but uh, uh, 
So we've had some sorrows, we've had some griefs, we've had some hard things to go through, and we even had some hard things that they go through at our church. We had, uh, I was just telling, I don't know if it was uh, Ben the other day, I was telling him about uh, two different guys that tried to take over the church, mm. you know. And one of them came, uh, came in and he says, uh, he said, Hiram, he said, you're afraid I'm going to take this church, you know. And I told him, I says, oh, no, I says, I'm not afraid. I says, uh, because the Lord placed me here. I said, if the Lord placed me here, nobody can take it. I said, only the Lord. He's the only one that can move me out and yeah. put somebody else in. I said, other than that, I said, there, I don't care what you do. I said, you can't take it. Yeah. I said, so I'm not afraid, you know. So he left, you know. So he knew he couldn't do anything, so he left. And there's been a, several other uh, ministers that tried the same thing at the church. But each time, God prevailed. Mm -hmm. God uh, saw the things through. And up to this day, we're still there with the church. We're still working with it. Yeah. And we're still seeing, uh, you know, great things done for the Lord, you know, in the, in the ministry. Yeah. You know, that's, that's great because it's great to hear the, this, this kind of thing because I think a lot of times people just kind of think that, you know, God, uh, you know, all, all of this stuff's happening. Life feels uncertain right now. Uh, maybe I've done something to displease God and this is how he's punishing me. And you know what? When, when we're serving God, we're being faithful to him. Doesn't doesn't guarantee us against tough times. Yeah. But what it does, I think, is it does. It means that that we're going to go through that storm, but we're yeah. not going to go through the storm alone. <clears throat> yeah. Like he's with us, and I know in our family we've never lacked. There's been yeah. some scary times where we're like reaching the end. Yeah. You know, I can see the end approaching. You know, <laughs> where we're going to be out of resources here pretty soon, and and yet God would be would prevail. Uh huh. Yeah. And that was that's always been an encouragement to me, so that now yeah. when I'm in the really tough season, I can say, you know what, God, you've never let me down. Uh -huh. I'm just going to choose to trust you in this. I'm going to choose to praise you. Yeah, I feel like praise means more to God in the tough season than when everything is, you know, great and wonderful. Right? Yeah, one of the things I think like that has always really um, blessed me. And, and it's something that I've always been able to look back on um, is your story. And I think what has spoken the most to me about your story is from when, from when you got saved, um, and maybe you can elaborate on it, but the amount of um, adversity that you faced here on the reservation because when you got saved, being a Christian wasn't very acceptable. Yeah. Being a Christian wasn't cool. It wasn't. Um, mm. It wasn't. It wasn't a thing that was uh, smiled upon. It was yeah. frowned upon. And I think um, what has come out of what God has done in your life and the ministries and the churches and the people that have been saved that have gone on to to reach. Um, the reservation since then, I think to me has always been something that I've admired and that I have been able to, to look at and remember even when things have gotten tough in my short Christian life so far. And I think, um, I think that's something that's really, uh, yeah, uh, Something that my son Titus told me, well, not only me, he told, uh, he was talking about it in church, and I never thought of that until he, he said it. But he said, uh, <clears throat> my dad uh, is the uh, oldest minister on this reservation. And I thought, at the time, I thought to myself, I'm not that old. You know? <laughs> but uh, <clears throat> what he began to explain was uh, the Catholic Church, the uh, Methodist Church, the Baptist Church, the Assembly of God. He said, all these churches, he said, through the years, he said, many of them has changed, exchanged pastors three or four times. Yeah. He says, but you've been here through the whole thing. Yeah. From here to here, you've been here. And in the meantime, the uh, Baptists, the Methodists, the Catholics, the Assembly of God all had 
numbers mm -hmm. of ministers, pastors that have come in yeah. during that period of time. He said, but you're still here through the whole time, you know. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so when he said that, I got to thinking, well, I guess that's right, you know. So sort of in a sense, I guess you might say that's uh, uh, faithfulness to the Lord, you know. And I don't, I don't uh, brag about it, you know. Mm -hmm. Actually, all the things that I really do for the Lord, I never really, really brag about them or talk about them. You know, I just, I, I tell people, I says, I'm just a Jesus man. Yeah. I said, I don't like to be called a doctor or a bishop or, you know, uh, anything like that. I said, if you want to talk to me about a thing, I'm just a Jesus man. You know? Yeah. And, uh, and so these are some of the, the things that, you know, has come my way and uh, uh, some of the, uh, adversities in the beginning of uh, uh, the church, the full gospel churches on the reservation, um, uh, kind of more or less talking about Indian churches, you know, that, mm -hmm. that first began to come on the reservation. Uh, a lot of the people here uh, didn't understand uh, <clears throat> full gospel, or they didn't understand, you know, the, the, the way we believed. And uh, so we get a lot of persecution, you know. Now, when you say full gospel, there might be some people don't don't really know what you mean by that. What do you, what do you mean by full gospel? Okay, full gospel is uh, believing from Genesis to Revelation, the whole thing, you know. No traditions, no anything else, just strictly the Word of God all the way through. Gifts of the Holy Spirit didn't yeah. stop. We yeah. still have access to all of the benefits. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Right on. Yeah. And so anyway, there'd be people that uh, beat me on the street, you know, or I'd be going down the street or whatever. And I think I was saying this uh, Sunday at the church. And uh, <clears throat> they would see me, they would call me, you know, uh, I don't know, about maybe three or four real terrible cuss words. Wow. But they put preacher on the end. <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I said, well, at least they put preacher on the end, even though they called me some terrible names, you know, yeah. that uh, <clears throat> uh, before they ended up saying preacher. But a lot of these people that back in them days that was, you know, persecuting uh, my ministry and stuff like that, later on, a lot of them began to come back to me and say, could you pray for me? Mm. Could you yeah. pray for my loved ones? They're in a hospital or, or whatever. Could you, you know, go up there and pray for them or whatever, you know? And I'd say, sure. Yeah. And I prayed for a lot of people in the hospital that was on their dying beds. And like maybe three or four days later, they passed away, you know? Yeah. But I went in there and prayed for them. I had them say the sinner's prayer, you know? And uh, <clears throat> I remember two, two people up there, uh, the... The father and the son were both in the hospital. I went over there and I prayed for him. He gave his heart to the Lord. I went down the hall to the son, prayed for him. He gave his heart to the Lord and uh, had a double funeral a few days later. Wow. And uh, <clears throat> so, you know, people like that, they, you uh, uh, just get them in by the, you know, you might say the skin of their teeth, yeah. you know, but they make it in, you That's know, right. because of the blood of Jesus, you know. Not because, like I was talking to church, we don't go to heaven because of perfection. Yeah. We go to heaven because of the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And uh, so we can start out working towards perfection, but we're not. Maybe we don't make it over there. We're right about here, we die. Yeah. But because of the blood of Jesus Christ and our uh, giving our lives to Him, we're going to make heaven our home. That's right. Mm -hmm. In, in, in kind of a sense, we do believe in perfection, but not ours. It's him. Yeah. He's yeah. one of those. Per His blood was perfect. Yeah. And uh, you know, I'm really, I'm really glad you were able to share that. Um, one of the things that I wanted to kind of bring home here as we we wrap this up was how you didn't get offended when they called you that blankety blankety blank preacher man. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> Is you know not being offended by that when the persecution comes when people call us names or whatever for what we believe mm -hmm. not being offended by it because you don't know what's going to happen yeah by 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 handling persecution the way Jesus says to do it just keep loving people yeah then when they are in that crisis situation now who are they going to call yeah yeah who do they look to and so that kind of leaves that door open maybe maybe just a crack but it leaves that door open for, for God to go and do something amazing in that person's yeah. life, even if it is in their, their final hours, mm -hmm. then it gives God that opportunity. Mm -hmm. But what it boils down to is we're living epistles. Yeah. Read of all men. 
you know. And so we may not be able to testify to a lot of people, but they're going to see our life and our fruits yeah. and see what we're doing, and then they're going to come and say, could you pray for me? Yeah. And uh, uh, I need help. My family needs help, you know. And compassion, you know, is there. Yeah. You know, to pray for them. You know, sometimes they'll go out of your way to go pray for them, you know. Mm-hmm. And and that's, I think, <clears throat> something else to keep in mind when we're in a difficult season like this is it gives, difficult seasons give rise to more opportunities yeah. to tell people about Jesus, <clears throat> bottom line. Yeah. Because people get, you know, they encounter more need. And it's not that we look for crisis to happen or we like it when they happen, but those, but looking at, the, at a crisis in difficult <laughs> times in that respect helps us to approach it, I think, in a more healthy mentality that it's not, oh, woe is me, but mm. God, what are you doing in the middle of this? How can I help in the middle of all of this? Yeah. So yeah. that's been a real pleasure being able to yeah. <clears throat> share with you guys. Well, I just want to say I really appreciate you folks inviting you know, me down here to... Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, to have this, you know, on the uh, air program, and and uh, I just uh, any opportunity I can get, you know, with the Lord's help to do something like this, you know, I'll be, I'll be willing to do it, you know. And yeah, absolutely. I say that's the that's the part of my heart that sticks out. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Love it. Thanks for uh, thanks for coming in. And... <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Thanks for coming. And uh-huh. um, I guess that's that's basically it. This has been. Conversations episode three, and um, next next time, what is next time? Yeah, I don't know yet. Uh, we, we've t- batted around a couple of ideas. Uh, got a few camera shy people we're trying to wrangle in. <laughs> uh, but I thought about bringing in so w- the whole idea behind this was to bring in people local to our community mm-hmm. and just share conversation because that's one of the things I think that's missing with people not being able to come to church in an ordinary fashion. Yeah. Sit around a table after service and talk yeah. about life. So uh, we'll, be, we'll be bringing more of these conversations, releasing them on Sunday nights. Mm-hmm. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon. God bless. God bless See you guys. guys.